Here I'm going to show you three ways to create workbooks and then save and close them using VBA and macros. And we're going to do this by copying the current worksheet that you see here to a new workbook and then saving and closing that workbook by removing this worksheet into a new workbook, saving and closing that one, and then creating a new one from scratch and saving and closing that one. And throughout this, I'll show you the proper way to reference the new workbooks so that you can actually do something with them instead of just immediately saving and closing them. And if you're interested in learning more about VBA, I have an entire course that'll take you from beginner to expert on teachexcel.com. So check the link in the description of this video for more information on that. All right, let's go to the VBA window and get started. Alt F11. I've got some notes here that lay out everything that we are going to do. And in the full course, I have many more notes so that you are never lost. Now, let's go for the first example here, which is how to add workbooks from the worksheet. And that's where we're going to copy a worksheet into a new workbook and move it into a new workbook. And the very first step for that is to declare a variable. Now, of course, you don't have to declare a variable, but it makes your life so, so much easier. We're going to call this one WB for workbook and new and set it as the workbook type. And what this is going to allow us to do is to save a reference to our new workbook into this variable so that once the new workbook has been created, we can use this variable to work with and reference and do whatever we need to with that new workbook. So the variable makes our life so much easier. And it's a workbook type because it's going to store a workbook reference. And now that we have our variable set up, the next thing is to create the new workbook. And this is amazingly easy once you know how to do it. So what we want to do here is to take this worksheet right here, sales one, and copy it into a new workbook. What we do for that is to reference worksheets. So we actually want to deal with the worksheets collection. It's a collection of all the worksheets in this workbook. And we simply say, hey, I want you to take sales one. This is how you reference a worksheet right here, worksheets and the name of the worksheet. And then I want you to take it and copy it somewhere. So we put dot copy. Now, if I put before or after, after this, it will copy this worksheet within the current workbook before and after our arguments. So it's additional things that we can use to control how this works, but we're not going to cover that in this tutorial. We want to make it go into a new workbook, not somewhere else in the current workbook. And the easy way to do that is just like this. No arguments after it, no nothing special. Just reference the worksheet that you want to copy and put dot copy and that puts it into a new workbook. So watch what happens when I run it right now. Let's go back here, F8, add workbooks from worksheets. And there we go. Sales one worksheet with all of the data, exactly the same as this guy right over here. So it's as easy as that to create the workbook. And let us close this and not save it. The next step is to be able to reference that workbook so we can do something with it and then save it and close it. So we go down here where we get the reference. And what you want to do here is to write set the name of the workbook variable and then active workbook. Active workbook references the currently visible or on top workbook. That's the easiest way to think about it. And as you saw right there, this line of code creates the new workbook and puts it on top of the old one so that the new workbook becomes the active workbook. So we reference the active workbook like this, and then we say, hey, put that reference right here into this variable so I can very easily reference that new workbook now using this variable. And since it is an object variable, it's a little bit technical. I don't have time to get into it in this tutorial, but I do completely get into that topic in the course and I cover it from many different angles so you understand exactly how it works. But since it references an object variable, a workbook object, we have to put set in front of it. Now, to be fair, I don't expect you to understand that completely right now, but the more that you work with workbooks and VBA and macros, that will become clear how it works. So let's move on to actually working with the workbook. Now that we have our variable wb new set to the workbook, every time that I write it and I hit period, 
I get a list of all the methods and all the properties that I can use for the new workbook. So all the things I can do to it and all the information I can access from it. So what do we want to do here? Well, we want to do save as. And you may notice here there are many options for it. Save, save as, save copy as. There are so many things that you can do. Of course, I cover that in the full course. But we want to do save as because it's the first time that we're saving the workbook. So what we can do, there are many arguments here, but the first one is the file name argument. So that allows us to say where we want to put it on the computer. So C, test, and let's say new workbook.xlsx. And even though we could leave it at that, I do recommend using the next argument. So comma, we see it is file format. And you have 51 for a regular XLSX workbook, 52 for a macro-enabled workbook. There are many other options, but we're going to stick with 51. Now, like I said, not exactly required, but it's pretty darn good practice to avoid potential errors. So wbnew.saveas. Now we have saved the new workbook in this directory under this name with this file extension. And we have ensured the file format with this guy. So we're all good. It is time to close it, wbnew.close. And if you want to ensure that the changes are going to be saved, if there were any between save as and close, you could go ahead and put true for the first argument here, save changes. And this now creates a new workbook from a copy of the sales one worksheet in the current workbook. Then it saves it to a new file down here and closes it. Let's run it right now and see what happens. All right, everything looks okay. And in my test directory, I have a new file, new workbook. Let me go ahead and open up that guy and let us see what it looks like. So I'm opening up the file now, sales one, and we have all of the exact same data. And you can see the file up here, new workbook, the file name, all of the data from sales one over here, and this has not been touched at all. Now let's go ahead and close that, Alt F11. That's all there is for that. This is the template for it. Once you have the workbook reference inside of the variable, you can do whatever you want down here with the new workbook. Whatever you want with the new workbook, including adding worksheets, removing worksheets, renaming things, adding values, adding charts, pivot tables, whatever you want to do, you can do it now with a new workbook using this variable. So notice how when we wanted to save it, we did the variable and then save as, close it, the variable, and close. As easy as that. Now the other thing up here is to take a worksheet from here, let's say sales to completely remove it from this workbook and put it into another one. And for that, all we do is the same thing as up here. We reference the worksheets in the current workbook. We say which one we want to deal with, standard worksheet reference stuff right here. And then we say dot move without any arguments after it. That way, instead of moving this worksheet around the current workbook, we will move it into a new workbook. So if I comment this out, everything else, by the way, works exactly the same. So we don't need to change anything, just how we create the new workbook. That's the only thing we're changing. So go back here, Alt F11, Alt F8, and run the new macro. Notice now before I run it, Sales 2 still exists in this workbook run the macro. It's going to create the new workbook. Now, this is an interesting thing. So if you had a file already saved under the same name, you're going to get a little pop-up window here. And since I'm using the same name to save this workbook, it says, hey, do you want to override it? Yes or no. There are many ways to get around this or to simply overwrite the file automatically, which I cover in the full course, of course. But for here, let's let the user choose. Do I want to replace the file? Yes, I do. Let's go ahead and replace it. And now we're back here in the original workbook. Notice we only have the sales one worksheet tab now. Sales two has been taken out. Let's go ahead and open up the new workbook and see if we have the new worksheet tab in there. So here you can see new workbook at the top. And this time it is just sales two with all of the data from that worksheet tab and none of it left here in the original workbook. So that's how you can very quickly export worksheet tabs. And a lot of times what you want to do when you create a new file from that is to then email this as an attachment. 
and that's very easy to do once you know the few lines of code required for emailing, of course. So let us now close this guy, and I shall delete new workbook from the test directory, and let's go back to the VBA window and go for the next example. This time we are going to create the workbook from scratch. It follows a very similar format from the previous macro, just a few changes. So dim wb new as workbook, all right. And now instead of copying or moving, we're just going to create a completely blank workbook. So this time, instead of working with worksheets, like we worked with right here, we are going to work with workbooks. That's the workbooks collection. It's like a container of all of the currently open workbooks. And what we're gonna do is say, hey, workbooks container, I want you to go ahead and add a new workbook. That's it. We don't need to do any options for it, just workbooks.add. Now you can leave it like this, but the beautiful thing of this is that not only does it add a workbook, it also returns a reference to that workbook. So we can say set wb new equals to workbooks.add, which simultaneously adds the workbook and gives us a reference to the new workbook, which we can then store in this variable. And now that we have that, we pretty much do the same thing that we did before. wb new dot save as c test and name it whatever you want, by the way, xlsx51. And then we will go ahead and close it and save any changes that were made if they were made. And if you want to reference this guy in here, just like before, wb new. And then whatever you want to do with that new workbook. So let's say this time, let's go and just add something in the very first worksheet. Hi. So range A1 in the first worksheet of the new workbook, it will now say hi. Let's go back here, Alt F8, run the macro. And we have a new workbook in the test directory. Let's open it up and see what we get. We can see a new workbook and range A1, hi, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Close this guy up. And now you have the template for adding a completely new empty workbook, doing something with it, saving it for the first time, and closing it, ensuring that any changes you made between save as and here were also saved. Now, as you can imagine, there are about a million additional things that you can do with creating new workbooks and with saving them especially. How you save them, where you save them, what you do with them. There are so many different things that you can do. And I'm not going to cover all of those in this tutorial here. But if you want to learn so much more about VBA and macros and really become an expert in automating your spreadsheets, I highly recommend you check out my course on teachexcel.com and the link for it's in the description of this video.